Thank you. I, I just feel so honored. I guess I'm giving the closing keynote later. You just have my beginning and ending of the conference. I have no idea how that would be working. Um, somewhere down the line, I looked at myself and everybody started treating me differently. And I realized that I was like an elder in the community and shit. <laughs> well, I was just beginning this all out. And um, I guess that's the way the community moves. It was pretty quick. And um, I think one of the problems, I think, with moving so quickly is that we moved to the latest wave of the month or the latest, um, for us in queer, you know, in queer time, um, you know, the latest uh, tragedy, you know, somebody gets hurt all of a sudden, Gwen Araujo becomes Larry King, becomes, you know, uh, Mancio Corrales, you know, and so instead of updating this, I wanted to give you this how it was done um, seven years ago. So this is my first piece. Um, it's called Visitors. Some of the references may take you back a little bit, but I think it's important to know where it came from. Huh. I will just report state that 23-year-old Amancio Delilah Perez was dressed as a woman on the night of Thursday, May 5, 2004. Corrales flirted with a U.S. Marine named David. Eyewitnesses say David was furious when he found out Corrales was not a biological woman. The next morning, Corrales was found dead and mutilated. The family confirms Corrales' penis was cut off, his throat slashed, and that Corrales suffered severe trauma to the head. He's buried in Yuma Cemetery. Let us pause before we release another body to the ground, before we silence these souls of freedom to lullabies, oppressed for peace. Let us pause before we mention fallen heroes, before we forget ourselves, our undecided voters, waiting dead battery the most. Some say the wars overseas are wrong, but our soldiers are brave and right. Where's the heroism there? How do closed eyes fall for the blind help things anyway? If every soldier put down the gun, who'll fight the war? What hero is ready to die for war, but not die in peace? Who measures bravery skull by skull? What God consecrates a temple built on bones? Who's not asking? Who's not telling? What hero got some mosque with no weapons of mass destruction? Uh, that we say move for heroes who battle every day, not for some God on their side, but for their own truth on the inside. Who fights terrorism? The army protecting an oil field? Or an immigrant who refuses to surrender to a country that hates him? The person eavesdropping on phone conversations or gender queer trying to live unmolested in homeland security neighborhoods. Who fights terrorists? Soldiers? Searching families? Or a community creating family where none before existed? In a world where we are a bit much, as if I respect people's rights to be who they are, but queers are a bit much, as if I believe everyone has the right to live with dignity, but undocumented workers are a bit much. We see people overseas terrorized, unsafe in streets, in buses, in churches, anytime, anywhere. Are they much different from us? Unsafe on streets, in churches, in buses, anytime, anywhere? If it's terrorism there, what is it here? If resisting there makes a hero, then we are surrounded by heroes right now. In a world where we are a bit much. Maybe we are. Let me see for heroes to battle every day, not for some God on their side, but for their own truth on the inside. Let me see for those who die violently, those who die quietly, those on t-shirts, and those on graves with games and embrace their lives. Who's not asking? Who's not telling? Who makes us feel unsafe? Who takes away our streets? Who refuses to recognize us? Murders our youth, silences us, rapes us, attacks us. Who's the terrorist? Who? It's not over there, sometimes it's even in here. Let's go ahead, let's take care of the terrorists that live inside all of our hearts, okay? I've been waiting to do this because I just want to sort around.
Remember me, looking down on you from beyond, shed a single perfect tear. Bullshit. <laughs> How many of you saw rent? You're a little young for it, but it's good here. Yes, yeah. <laughs> 525,600 minutes, right? Okay. Well, I never saw rent on stage. My friends, they're rent people. And uh, when the movie came out, they said, hey, let's go see the movie. And uh, I said, sure, why not? Now, you see, I had just come back from a memorial service for a murdered trans woman. And so I messed up, and I'm crying, and all this. I'm oh my god, yes. I, OK, I should probably go see a movie, because I just don't want to be home by myself. And I'm so half joking, I'm going, sure, I'll go see this movie. I mean, it's not as if, like, you know, some trans woman of color is dying and shit, right? Okay, some of you get it. For those of you who haven't seen it, rent. Rent happens in the day back when um, HIV AIDS first started coming out. And the only drug they had available was ACT, which basically gave you enough time to wonder when you were going to die. And so there's four people there with, um, who are HIV positive with AIDS. Um, the first person was this like big, straight acting dude in the movie. You know, he's got that deep voice, and he kind of looks like the guy from Law and Order. The second one is this junky emo musician. No, this, no, he's not the junkie. This emo white musician dude and his junky girlfriend. And the fourth one is this badass, tranny, genderqueer, Latina with a killer sense of style and compassion for all things living. Guess who dies? My friends, bless their souls, go, well, uh, well no one kills her. But of course someone does, right? The writers, and the people in the audience, and everybody around her, and they're going, well, she's in a better place right now, and she's looking down on us, and now I start just crying because it's the memorial service, it's the movies, it doesn't matter. Queer person after queer person is just dying. Well, since the white evil one is junkie girlfriend, get another day to eat ice cream. I hate these stories where the magic ones die. And it's oh so noble, oh so inspiring, strengthening. It's like when you've survived abuse, okay? You pissed off all your friends, you know, you're running from your family, you're probably in some kind of substance recovery, or you're trying not to cut, and you're spending way too much time in therapy, and you're kicking and clawing for some semblance of normalcy, and then all of a sudden somebody goes, oh my god, your story is so inspiring. <laughs> I don't fucking want to be inspiring. <laughs> I want to live. I want to feel clean. I want to feel healthy. After doing stuff like eating or, or making love or even after this night, I want to I wanna live. And instead of just feeling this rot in my mouth and just feeling like shit. Why doesn't some sensitive, straight, white emo boy with too much arms shut the fuck up and die for me? <laughs> Queen 
happy, Mira's happy, Meg is snow, and all of her whites in the suburbs think that her beauty comes from what in, and they're fine with it too. <laughs> The real moral of the story, right? Is don't mess with high family queens. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, with all that shit like this, is there any wonder why we hide our magic? But at what cost? What happens to our stories <laughs> when we hide who we are? Want to know a secret? I can go to an herb shop, and the herbs have colors, and if, if they match the colors that I see on you, you can take those herbs and you'll feel better. My judo sensei said I can be a healer. I can touch you and know where you're hurting. Just do. What's your secret? Can you heal too? Can we heal each other? Because I don't want to be the moral to someone else's bedtime story. I want to live happily ever after. And I never want to feel guilty again. And if I ever see anybody being hurt because they're magic, I'll protect them. I swear.